Hey, everybody. This is Vince Gilligan, creator of Breaking Bad. Brian Cranston, uh, play Walt and directed this episode, 201. I'm Aaron Paul, and I play Jesse. Hi, I'm RJ Mitty, and I play Walt Jr. And I am Anna Gunn, and I play Skylar White. I'm Betsy Brandt. I play Marie. Hello, everybody. Yo. Yo. So this is our second season, so we uh, Sony's insisted that we shoot it all in black and white. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, just to save some money. <laughs> <laughs> how'd you make eye. this? Now the first thing Very is, how'd you make this? Eyed. How'd you make this eyeball turn? That's that's magic. I can't disclose that. <laughs> Actually, uh, Dennis Milliken, uh, our special effects. Den Dennis Peterson. Peterson, rather. Oh, yeah, for God's Peterson. Sake. Oh, let's start. Uh, right. Yeah, starting off. Our <laughs> There's too right. many Dennises. Yes. Um, there are. They had filament, monofilament, and. Uh, uh, a, a guy's on each side of that eyeball and slowly twisted it up. And then uh, digitally erased the little piece of... And digitally erased the uh, monofilament. So oh. Yeah. That was a neat trick. And oh, look how cute. Had, uh, was this also like uh, attached to some sort of monofilament to it, make it float like that? Or well, actually, we, we attached it with a sandbag on the bottom of the pool so that it would just end up suspended like that. And we had scuba diving... Uh, camera operators inside the pool to be um. able to pull that off. Uh -huh. So, did yeah. you get in the water? Oh no, 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 no. of course not. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Brian no. doesn't like to get wet. Oh, no, no. And this here was a little piece of film uh, that ended last season, uh, season uh, end of season one here, uh, directed uh -oh. by Tim Hunter. This little, this, just this little bit here. And you did a very nice job, you and the crew matching in. It was difficult because this location is near our uh, Q Studios in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And they set up, our, our art department set up these these cars, these junked cars in a specific order. So it looks uh, interesting. Sorry, that's our favorite line ever. It's our favorite line ever. Ray Cruz. Yes. We're going so that when we came back for the second season, um, of course, the, the, the wrecking yard dismantled everything. And so, oh, yeah, and so right. we had to come back and completely recreate it because now we found out that we were picking up exactly where we left off season one. Now, did you actors have to pitch in and like literally lift stuff and move it around by hand? Or how did that work? Oh, no. oh. Yes, that of course. Yes. Of course. <laughs> We're low budget. I yeah. wasn't working that like day. Brian called film. me and said, get over here, yeah. gun. Lift we some called cars. you a bunch of Bring your lifting belt. Said, Anna, right. I have a, got a cupcake for you. <laughs> and I said, ooh, a cupcake. I'll do it. <laughs> Ray Cruz is a uh, character. Raymond Cruz, who plays Tuco oh. here, he is he's really good. He's really scary as hell on this thing. Can What's, we cuss on this? Can I say scary as shit? Is that I, think, I think you just yeah. did. Yeah. I think you just did, yes. Yeah. What's great about Ray is that there and is And we're still this, here. We're still here. Yeah. There's a certain amount of unpredictability so about okay. it. Yeah. You know, that, that, that makes him dangerous, almost as a person, you know. And these guys, oh, boy, it, this became very brutal. Yeah, I don't know why he had to really punch that I guy. I know, he actually really did. I know. Over and over again. Yeah, take method take. actors. Method. You, know how, you know how hard it was to get that guy to the hospital in time? I know. He almost died. Oh, my God. I know it seems like I haven't seen this before. But Look at your face. <laughs> yeah. But right here is a, used to be a, was he a professional boxer or was he a, I know he used to be a boxer. He used to be a, a, a fighter, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Right, Yeah. Much? Yeah. That was obviously a joke earlier about nobody got hurt in the making of this. Yeah. Yeah. You never know what That's the might. disclaimer at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, no one was hurt in the making <laughs> of this. Actually, it. sometimes we put no one was unhurt in the making of this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is right near, uh, as you said, uh, Brian, right near Q Studios, and it's also right near the flight path of uh, Albuquerque uh, Sunport. They call it the Sunport. I don't know way. why. It's Fancy the, name for an airport. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you guys had to stop every two minutes for yeah. uh, planes coming in, right? Sound wise, I mean, you don't see them in the air, but you have to. When you're doing dialogue, when you're recording dialogue, you gotta, you gotta watch out for having planes fly through. When I when we first set up shop there in New Mexico at Q Studios, I thought this was the stupidest idea to place this studio so close to the airport. Yeah. But then I realized, ninety five percent of the time they're landing planes, and so the uh, the noise is not that bad. Yeah, they're not as really loud because they're coming in uh, like basically just sort of idling practically coming in.
I remember setting up this shot because uh, I was so into wearing my director's hat that I forgot I had this huge monologue to deliver. And I and I said, okay, and, and I really talk in third person. Okay, Walt sits in and they and Jesse sits in with Walt and then all of a sudden they talk and I go, oh God. I, mean, I have some acting to do. I have do now. some wow. acting to do. I, have to work. I get that thing out. Wow. It's like, yeah, it's an, it's an odd feeling. I, I, I don't know how you, uh, I don't know how any actor directs at the same time they're acting. I don't know how you did this. I was very impressed. Well, my secret is that I don't do either one very well. So. <laughs> but I'm quick. Untrue. I'm bad, but I'm quick. <laughs> What's the... Yeah, I, I wish you'd have uh, one of these days. We should have uh, Mark Hansen, our wonderful prop master, in on one of these things. That money is a big deal for him because it's you. You can't just photocopy money. Uh, that's obviously not real money, but um, it's a big deal getting yeah. it as a prop because you you know the, the, there's all kinds of legal hoops you have to go through yeah. in order to be able to. But don't they sometimes it? wrap the outside of the the fake wad of money with real bills? I've seen them do that. I know I and, do when I'm paying for things. <laughs> 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 That's, that's, that's how you roll. <laughs> but no, you're, you're right. They, they, yeah, they're, they're, that is, and that's a good way to do it. I love that car. We, in the, yeah. the pilot, we used, <laughs> we used actual uh, hundreds, and then we lost a couple of them in uh, the prop master, the different I prop master. I thought we used real money. Yeah. That's and, why you have a different prop master. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he was very mad because he said, I'm responsible for all this. And then he, uh, I don't, I guess, I don't know. No one ever caught me, so. <laughs> this, was <laughs> this was hard because we're asking asking the actor to be able to be dead lifted up and then allow himself to be dropped in and ray cruz to pick him up i mean it's tough and he, he has like a like, like a metal corset on pretty much right now right yeah to protect yeah. him the actor was fitted with like this metal brace that went around his entire rib cage and any organs that are in his torso and so that when tuco comes up and starts kicking him that we don't actually damage the actor <laughs> and it was also for the cpr here yeah yeah to be able to slam down on his chest yeah, yeah. no they don't teach that anymore it doesn't work you come here breathe into his mouth i love these two guys the the big guy in the background I'm, I hate to say it, I'm drawing a blank. Jesus. Well, yeah, Jesus. Well, Jesus. I was going to, yeah. Oh, I you know, forget I that. that well, but, uh, no, I remember his name is uh, Jesus Pian. And he pronounces, I believe he pronounces Jesus, not Jesus. Yeah. yeah. But they call yeah. him Jesus Jr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such a great guy. And Cesar. And Cesar. The and other Cesar. actor here. Cesar did a wonderful. Terrific guys. Both yeah. these guys did wonderful jobs as well as certainly Ray. And uh, Jesus Jr. was, uh, right before we hired him for this, he was, uh, he was in a big uh, box store uh, to be unnamed because the lawyers would probably have a problem with this. And they, he wanted to get a photo of himself at their photo department, and they wouldn't take his photo because he said he was a gangbanger and huh. they would photograph gangbangers. And he's just a very wow. he's not a, he's not a gangbanger. Yeah. He's just a very very sweet guy, very sweet young man. Mom, and he had a law. We told him he had a lawsuit, but uh, mm. he lives in Albuquerque, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He now, I, I thought it was interesting because, of course, I shot it to where you actually saw the body being hit and struck by the boot of Tuco. And yet, uh, in in the final edit, it's not in here. And I and at first I wonder, oh, what, I wonder what happened to that part of it. But I think it's more effective just to use your imagination to see how that body is being pummeled by the boot of, of this guy and not actually see it. I can't um, remember why we cut it. Uh, it. Might have been just to break your spirit. I, and, and it's worked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a shell of a man now. <laughs> Todd, this is a big well deal, right? Well played, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Would, uh, this was a big deal uh, making this. Was it, it wasn't a big deal making it stable so it wouldn't kill anybody. It was a big deal making it move, right? And making making the stack of cars move and then, and then our... Uh, cameras were above that so you were so the camera was on a crane Sorry. and then is that right yeah. and then how did you make how did you how did you make the the stack of cars move uh, what'd uh, you do again that was them. that was a uh, uh, a dennis peterson uh, rig that he had had it welded in in several places because we were actually sliding bodies down there and camera people were uh, yeah. working underneath there so we had to make sure it was secure and yet they can gimbal it by having it's a couple pipes that they push down on, um, and it has has the stack moving. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. 
Dennis Milliken, who you mentioned earlier, is our transpo captain right. who provides our uh, picture cars, including the uh, the great uh, Monte Carlo here that uh, Jesse drove through all all this season. It's a the badass pool. car. Yeah. It is. Yeah, uh, it is. But it's a it was a real piece of crap, right? I mean, it yeah. hardly ever ran. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was always a leak in oil. You couldn't take it to certain locations because it was just pissing hydraulic fu- fluid yeah, everywhere. But it has hydraulics, so that's so, what really yeah, matters. Yeah. 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 Which come into play very importantly in the next episode. There's another fine car, the oh, wagon. Hey. Oh. Oh. Betsy, whose who's belly who's is that? Belly? That was that's my belly. I didn't know that. Yeah. That was Betsy's that's belly. That's my belly. Uh, we did a pickup when I was however many weeks she was supposed to be there. When you reached the exact time of, you know, where Skylar was at in the pregnancy. That's right. so great. And they yeah. took stills of us, remember, um, <gasps> without, the, you know, from the neck down. And Betsy and I were actually looking at the stills and had trouble recognizing ourselves, whose oh, really? body. We couldn't tell who, couldn't, if, if it was me or Anna. Yeah. You're built kind of the same way, yeah. tall, lanky. Lanky. Beautiful. Lanky. And a you good, mean that means good. That means good. Yeah, yeah, right. so beautiful. Tall drinks of water. Yes. And Betsy, so uh, the people probably don't know this. You were pregnant all through uh, season two, this season here. And they would not know because I had many big purses. <laughs> many hiding big the purses. beautiful belly that we just hiding. saw. And pillows and whatever else we <laughs> and can see. And pillows and counters. Yeah. And... One of the tricks of filmmaking is that we couldn't show. Betsy pregnant, and we needed to show Anna pregnant. Yeah, that <laughs> was like flipped. <laughs> Damn. Hello. And we should tell the world. I was so what... happy though that my that we could use um, my belly to do that instead of you know because didn't we have a, a fake one made? Well, that that's the fake one on Anna. The what? Yeah. No, I mean um, to do to do the shot where yeah. it's bare and a she's oh, yeah. seen. Yeah. Yes, fake, there was a fake f- belly that, and it just didn't look quite as good. You can see it's, folds. Yeah, and the skin yeah. tone didn't yeah. look quite right. Was even though, gra- quite, the, even Anna? though they did a makeup, did a beautiful job. Wasn't it a yeah. great football? Yeah. What did it you do fr- with the belly oh, once you were done? <laughs> Hung it up. Yeah. Oh, what did I do? Yeah, oh, yeah. Did you attack it? I uh, I t- put it up on top of the grip truck. Yeah, you I did. didn't want to see it again for a while. <laughs> and it smelled like bread, right? It smelled like bread and rubber. What rubber belly bread. doesn't smell like bread? <laughs> Loaf of rubber bread. bread Mine smells like rubber. bacon. <laughs> well, you guys got a big scene coming up here. Oh boy! You want to start talking about it before you? We get can to start it? talking well, about you know, it. Walt is just Walt made is hot by avocado face, face masks. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing gets a guy going like an, like an avocado face mask. Avocado face mask and a lady in a terry cloth. Robe. This was a very very delicate scene, and and Vince, you and I had and a lot of conversations about this, and and what it constituted, and and from an an actor standpoint and from a director standpoint, having to completely understand it, uh, is that it basically gets into what I felt was was a rape scene, yeah, and um. And the only way that I felt justified in doing this was were these moments here where he just witnessed this brutal beating and is so devastated and yet can't speak about it that he just needs and yearns for comfort and some tenderness of any kind. And what happens to Walt is that he he misplaces that tenderness and he gets excited. He gets sexually aroused. And so he he gets confused about the moment. Yeah, and it's Anna, the, what? it's the need to put that somewhere. Yeah, it really. <laughs> Literally, well, I mean, so <laughs> that's what she said. Oh, <laughs> that's what she said. Wait a minute, can wow. we rewind? <laughs> how no, but you... wait, but I what, what was interesting about how we did the scene was that I, um, Vince was so clear in the stage directions about little pieces that you see the underwear coming down and the le- and the hand on the on the refrigerator and things yeah. like that and Brian and I blocked it all out. Um, um, and the the camera crew, we they followed us around, and he said, "Okay, I'm going to want this, this, and that." We we never actually did it until the cameras were rolling, which yeah. I thought was a wonderful way to do it because the el- we just let, let the whole thing play out, and the element of surprise and things that you would never know were going to happen happen. Yeah. And um, usually, you know, you 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 run it a few times in rehearsal, but we just blocked it. We just did that sort of at blocking speed, and then we went into it. I was so impressed. It's such wonderful acting from both of you guys. I just, how many, and it must have been, I'm, I've never acted in my life. I can only imagine how exhausting a big emotional scene like this must be. How many times did you guys actually shoot it? Or, you know, takes? The three times, I guess, Probably something like times. from three different angles. But yeah. uh, there was an accident in, in one of them. And, and, no. and uh, as we got aggressive with it, um, 
I accidentally pushed Anna too hard into the refrigerator and she smacked her head on, on the side of it. And, yeah, and then went down. And it was already an emotional scene. And so she was upset and I was upset. And to me, it's like when you work these things out, you have to work them out without anyone getting hurt. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the, the tricky part of it. And if someone does get hurt, we've we've failed to a certain extent. Sure. You know what I mean? There's young Master RJ. Yeah. yeah. Nice mess, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what went on here? Oh, damn. Oh, Dad, right, Mom, again. Darn it. <laughs> what is um, going Dad's through your Dad's frisky head. against yeah. the refrigerator again. Uh, yeah, well. This again. The doghouse. Oh this is a real place in Albuquerque yeah. that sells very good hot dogs. I love the doghouse. Yeah, really? just... I'm, yeah, just uh, west of downtown. Look a little nervous there, Aaron. Yeah. Why, Aaron? Just trying to I, remember I'm just his always lines. nervous. <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember my lines. <laughs> and, and there's avocado. Uh, it's like, I know I speak at some point. Yeah. Yeah. That was a nice touch you did, Brian. The avocado dip uh, salsa, whatever. They that, used that, that from the d- other day. That matches uh, what was on Anna's face. <laughs> Sir, that was in the script. Oh, it was? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So, so, well done, Vince. Yes. Yeah. You guys are good. I actually, I tried to make it a transition shot from a close-up of the avocado face mask on the oh, wait a minute, that's refrigerator right. That's right, right. and then cut to the... But I like this shot. This, that's a great Pretty shot. Yeah, dynamic. That's, that's, yeah, that's a great shot. Out. Should mention at this point the writer of this episode, Jay Roberts. Yes. A wonderful writer. Yeah who was uh, my assistant on the pilot, and then he became a writer of yeah. the show. Did a great job. I love this scene. I love every scene in this scene. Oh, I like this scene, too. I love the way you talk over each other. Yeah. Um, there was... I asked Aaron to, to to see if he would be interested. We, we rehearsed this yeah. uh, after work one day. Thank God. And uh, we rehearsed all these scenes in the kitchen, and I, and I had this idea that I wanted to make it messy because their lives are messy. So I didn't want to worry about the separating the dialogue so it's clean. I wanted the overlap. Yeah. I wanted the, And I wanted him to go mixing in and out. And, yeah. We're trying to do more of that overlapping dialogue. The more the series, longer the series goes, season three, we're trying to do more of it. It's mm-hmm. it's it's, it's, it's just a, so real. It's, it's so feels, real. Yeah, it's a little bit of a technical issue to do it often sound wise, but it's always worth it to me. It, it is, but as you see, I mean, this the, we I shot this in a sense almost like a a play. It's in mm-hmm. it's in basically one direction, mm-hmm. and and then the other two scenes in the in the kitchen the same way, and. Uh, I th- I think because of the urgency of it, it it just it just works. Yeah, it sure does. All right, this is. I uh, love that this scene is almost always a two shot too. Yeah. To see just the way both of them handle the stress that they're dealing with. <laughs> see, is this a time with, with uh, Jesse's house? The, there was a whole change in the situation with that house too, wasn't yeah. there at the time? Oh, yeah, we, we should say first of all, this was shot on a stage. Even though you can see the RV in the background, and we're at Jesse's house, uh, this was our our stage set, and um, and since then the owners sold the house and then the, it demolished it. So we had to actually move out of the house, right? And, yes, and then. Hopefully, moving back in at some point. The uh, later, late, no. <laughs> well played, too. <laughs> this, you're exactly right. Uh, 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 this, uh, the, the very nice lady who, who owned the house that Jesse lived in since the pilot um, in this particular season uh, sold it, put it on the market, sold it. And um, this was our last episode of this season uh, that uh, we were able to use it. Uh, obviously, and as you said, not here. This is actually in a building uh, right near uh, the airport there in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Q Studio Soundstage. And that's our real RV parked inside the building, but just out the fake window there. Yeah. And uh, But yeah, later on in the season, uh, Jesse moves into another apartment and his, his mom and dad kick him out because they realize there's a meth lab in the basement. And, and all of that came about story-wise. God, they're because so... Conservative. Ooh, tough love. You take your meth lab. Yeah. Get out, son. <laughs> and hey, that's why you got a gun, right? You show your parents who's boss. Show you who's boss. <laughs> but it's so funny the way people think you got all this stuff planned out months and years in advance, story wise. And the reason in season two here in the uh, DVD box that you have, and as you watch it, and Jesse moves out of his house, and not in this episode, but later. 
all of that is because we had a very real, real life problem in the fact that we no longer had the ability to shoot in this real house. So we had to come up with all this. Yeah. You know, his mom and dad find the meth lab in the basement, all of this, because we knew we didn't have the house anymore. And that's. It's not it's not the best of conditions. You never want situations like that to dictate story. Oh, no. But it sometimes is unavoidable. <laughs> this so, purple. So I love this scene. We see right through you. <laughs> Betsy Brand. Have we ever used that again? I just had this idea to have the automatic dialing thing. I thought it was cool. We, Call Skylar. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think we're only we haven't been back there that often. <laughs> <laughs> and it's now, like, she's pregnant here, right, Betsy? And it's like we're trying to we're trying to yes. drape you and hide you any way we can. Thank God for a lab coat. How many months were you when we started the season right here, Betsy? Second trimester is the Beginning of my second trimester. And uh, you're a wonderful uh, baby boy named Frederick. Yeah. <laughs> Ready. He's, real. He's very cute. He looks like Bam Bam from uh, oh the, my God. the Flintstones. He's always he's smiling. Just such a Oh, he's a chunk of love. He's just a chunk <laughs> of <junky>. love. <laughs> he's chunky. Chunky. There's Dino. Yeah, there's Dean. Knives and forks. The, the, the lovely Dean. And all the owners. purple. All the purple know, and violet. The, black nice. sense. Call me. the owner of this house is a very nice guy. He's a real sweet guy. Yeah, he is. What also the, Fred. His name yes, is Fred. Fred. Yes, 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 yes Jane, Fred. Yeah. Fred. And then and and his wife. And, yeah, June, wonderful, yeah. Wonderful folks. This is a nice neighborhood. Oh, this little so. boy is about to have his dreams shattered. What are you oh. talking about? <laughs> boy in his car. Nothing like that. You know, the shame of it was, in, uh, you know, well, no, I mean, it was, uh, we, unfortunately, we couldn't do this, but Betsy wanted to drive over the little boy instead of the car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wasn't there a giant rattlesnake during this day? Like, right by yes. the set? Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. in, in a trash can. Yeah. This, a house trash is, uh, can? this house is located in the Northeast Heights, uh, right near the Sandia Mountains um, in, in Albuquerque. Beautiful view. We're up uh, a little bit, and we can see down into the valley in Albuquerque. And it's a good neighborhood. Is there? Yeah, it's nice. Not far from the tram? Is it? Not far from the tram, yeah. If you ever go to visit Albuquerque, or those who have not been there, it's a beautiful city. New Mexico is a beautiful state. And they've got, right not far from where this is shot, they've got the world's longest aerial tramway. Yeah. Which is like, it's you ride this thing, and it just you're on it forever. And you're, I mean, you don't do it if you're afraid of heights. I know. I do it, I do it weekly, though, because I like doing the trails up there. Yeah, the right. hikes. I have like a seven mile hike. Oh, yeah. yeah. Damn, that's cool. You ever uh, ski up there? They have a ski No, it's, yeah, no, no. it's said they won't let me. I love Marie's oh, right. Muzak. Yes. Yes. Muzak? <laughs> Fantastic. I know. Thomas. Oh, poor kid. I love and Dean. let's all talk about, can we mention how that was the first take? Yes. Yeah. I, was, I smashed that car on the first take. Yes, you well, did. Told that kid to wipe that sad look off his face because there's like nine more cars. I know. We, we had we had a I bunch of cars. We even did a test in the parking lot of the studios to make sure she could do that. And it was like, I don't know. We better have six or seven of these. And <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> You're but Steve. yeah, you did you did a wonderful job. Steven. Uh, Steven Quezada. Steven Michael Quezada. A wonderful local actor and uh, Albuquerque and a stand up comedian. Yeah. This is the first time we shot inside the uh, DEA offices. Was right? it? This is a practical uh, location <laughs> in downtown Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. And we have the whole floor that we rented. And we use it for the DEA offices and, and other. Uh, other offices that we may need we from time to time? That was the original plan. We use it for a lot of other offices, mm -hmm. and we don't. We don't usually use it that often for other places, and I keep thinking it'd be nice, but it's a big deal getting in and out of there. Unfortunately, there's only one yeah. elevator we can use, and it's small and slow, so it's kind of a... Well, now we, and that parking lot is not available anymore either. We used to have that parking lot right God, there. Got a bunch of downers. I know. It's yeah. Yeah. It's like, come on, stop bringing them up. No. That building. This is this you know? is these are clips from uh, from the first season, right? And you know the funny thing about this video, we needed it. Yes, this is video from the end of uh, episode um, six, uh, the last episode of season one, uh -huh. and. 
this video was shot with a video camera and we lost it. It was it was yeah. shot and we and we needed it for this scene. We needed it and it was lost and it right. was lost for a week or two. Did and it go up in the balloon? I, I, I don't know where it went. I don't know. Finally, they found it because we were like, oh, my. Well, it was in post-production and, and the idea of just going out back to a location to re uh, reshoot something like that is yeah. very expensive. Oh, God. And yeah. it, it's time consuming. It has to be all scheduled. And, oh, yeah. and so we were fit to be tied to figure out how we have to redo this whole thing. We know we have it. Look again and again. And um, and they finally found it. So oh, they were able to use it. Who had under it? Aaron Paul's bed. It was under Aaron Paul's bed. <laughs> <laughs> that it was. Aaron had taped over it. Mostly. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job, wow. <laughs> it's so true, though. <laughs> Some personal video and then an episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> SpongeBob is amazing. So this, this dude, the exterior of the White House is uh, is also shot in a house in a neighborhood in nor Northeast Heights in Albuquerque. Really, another, more fine folks. Fran and uh, Larry. Fran and Lewis. Lewis. I'm sorry. Yeah. Why did I say Larry? Fran and Lewis. Fran and Lewis. Yeah. Yes. Fran and Lewis are wonderful people. Wonderful, nice folks. They've really become uh, part of our crew in many ways. They really have. Mm -hmm. Yep. Really nice. And uh, they're neighbors, too. We, you know, when we do a lot of shots there, we, we get to know the whole neighborhood. Hey, uh, 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 yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, you all know, the, the street shots nice. and stuff. They're, yeah. They're nice folks. very lucky. If you look very closely, this is actually a different vehicle than, um, then, this is, this is, you know, when originally the idea was to provide millions of copies of cliff notes for all the viewers of, of Breaking Bad, so there, yeah. explain all this to them, because it's, uh, I mean, because it was written, not the directing, the directing is wonderful, but it was written very God, subtly. really? <laughs> it was written very subtly that that's actually a different vehicle. That's actually not Tuco. It's just some dude, just some random dude. So the whole yeah. idea is it just, it's just this whole thing spins out. Uh, the paranoia of Walt and Jesse spin out right. uh, based on coincidences and whatnot. This is when Skyler loved me. <laughs> how many people have been there? How many people have been there? Loved me in my yeah. bed. <laughs> what? Yeah, both. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> both. This is that was a tricky shot to get right because that was one shot actually in the uh, looking out of the real house and then here now right now you're in the studio. Yeah. Now we're in the, back on the turn stage. Phone off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. Brian, did you not turn your phone off? I got another uh, commentary sorry. to do. They're calling. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my muffins are here. <laughs> it is this whole episode, uh, 737, was called and named by the uh, the amount that Walt feels he needs, seven hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars before he can leave this business, and. Uh, and they're witnessing that beating informs the rest of the episode about how paranoid they get. But then the um, the 737 also has a dual meaning. Uh, mm -hmm. Which I think we, you want to reveal now or you want to? Uh, anyone who's interested probably already knows about it. I read it on the internet. So uh, you reveal it. In the, no. the co <laughs> wait for, save it for the commentary on, uh, on 213. Hey, that's a good idea. Right. Okay. That's there's a, a good idea. There's a little clue, a double entendre. Entendre. I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Hey, but uh, it's, uh, it's um, yes, the 737 refers, as as Brian just said, to the amount of money he needs, but it also refers to something else. It's a little a little clue, a delicious little clue. Mm -hmm. mm, delicious. <laughs> Savory. Bacon. <laughs> this is a nice Funions. shot. Onions. By the way, this was uh, Michael Slovis's first uh, episode as director That's of right. photography. That's right. Slovy. Slovy. We love Slovis. I call him Iron Mike. He's, uh, <laughs> really? He's, uh, he's awesome. He is, he, he, uh, got, uh, nominated for the Emmy. Uh, yeah. This, this, this season, uh, for season two, for this right. season you're watching. Wonderful, wonderful DP, uh, recommended to us by one of our absolute go-to directors, Adam Bernstein, who's directed, uh, probably more episodes of Breaking Bad, not definitely more episodes of Breaking Bad than any other director. And uh, Adam Bernstein and Michael Slovis has worked together a lot in the past. And uh, he recommended Michael, and he's just a prince of a guy. Yeah, he is. And Isn't such a genius. Just, oh, my God. He's just so good. Yeah. And he will be directing um, in episode three. In season yeah, three. Season three. Is That's right. I mean, season three. Yeah. yeah. In season three, episode um, nine. nine. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. yeah. 
And and when he is directing, uh, uh, his B camera operator, um, uh, Peter Rainier, Peter Rainier, um, a wonderful, wonderful uh, DP uh, himself yeah. will be will be stepping in, yeah. taking the reins, being uh, our DP uh, for that episode for the couple episodes. Yeah. And uh, Peter's a wonderful guy as well. We just got a great crew. We got the best crew in oh, TV. We have a few. Fantastic yeah. crew. This is one of my best. The, my favorite lines here from Jesse. <laughs> Rice and beans. <laughs> rice and beans. <laughs> rice and beans. Ah, oh, rice and beans. <laughs> Nothing beats them. <laughs> Nothing does beat Green chili on the side. Uh, <laughs> I love that shirt. You still have that shirt? I think so, yeah. yeah. Jesse's attire is just classic. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, such a beautiful thing. Right, so I love the Jesseisms. Didn't you say you were going to go all testicular on somebody? What are yeah, you all testicular on you. All testicular. <laughs> <laughs> you should say. See My the, favorite one. is still... <laughs> It's still cow house. <laughs> yeah. A cow house. Yeah. Yeah. You can't think of yeah, the you word know. barn. The cows live. <laughs> the cows. God, you're so stupid. Well, where the cows live. Do I just spell it out for you? See, what, what we're wearing here, we also showed up at uh, Halloween, a Halloween party and oh, completely yeah. reversed our characters. So I wore all his garb and he came with a bald cap. You wore that actual outfit, I right? wore that actual outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you wore a bald cap and the glasses That's and the right. mustache. And yeah, there. it was amazing. It was so good. Our, Ooh, our makeup and hair people did a great job. What's she looking and, at? And look real mm. closely here. That's uh, you <laughs> what's the, the, uh, Ted Ted Who is that guy? Ted Benneke. <laughs> so now I know where I can get my good looks from. I like me a little Benneke. Uh, She's bounce. thinking, it's so fun to go to Fridays. I love the blooming onion. Blooming onion at the. Hey, Hank. How you doing? Is this, um, it's a bad time? Um, no, come on in. Uh, I, uh, I, I should have called first, I'm sorry. <laughs> what can I do for you? I love this scene. This is a great scene. I do too. Maybe we'll I love this too. Bit. Yeah, you, you were great I in like this. Both of you guys were great. I love this a little bit. I like it when Dean sits down and... That was a little Cranston, I have to say. Yeah, that was not a little Cranston. Yes. That was good. I like She's that. Touch O. Cranston. This is also where Brian showed up dressed as a... Um, Hitler. Hit, well, not Hitler. <laughs> we didn't say Hitler. We didn't quite go that far. Dressed as a German director. Wasn't that right? Yes. Were you modeling yourself German. after a particular uh, German director or just what? any uh, German director? Von Stroheim. Yeah. Eric von Stroheim. <laughs> was this the first day of shooting? First day of shooting, yeah, for, of my my uh, Thank God I wasn't first there. episode uh, directing. Yeah, so I just wanted to clown around a little bit, and they set me up with jodhpurs and boots and, <laughs> and the whole thing, and I had a riding <laughs> crop yeah. and an eyepiece yeah, and Kef, a Kathleen cigarette got an ensemble thing with a, I mean, with a holder. Yeah, yeah. with a holder, the whole thing. Just, yeah. just, just, nice. And I would go hot. around snapping yeah, it was people's hot. backside with my riding crop. You, you were, that was you really were just an excuse to snap our backside with I, the riding crop, by the way. It's <laughs> very powerful. Oh, was. But this is, this yeah, is a great the excuse so great. to whip us. She gave me at the shower. She stole it from Gertrude Zachary's. I love how this thing. She stole a TR, a baby yeah. TR. Yeah. <laughs> God. And I like Hank's response. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It is really a hard thing to get over. <laughs> It's just a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I love how yeah, you wind up here, Anna. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> Little finger point. Yeah. We're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> so there was this the very first scene of the first day? Mm, I don't think it was the first scene of the first day. Gosh. But it, was, but it, was, it was the first day. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I love that she um, really doesn't want to let him in the house, and she really doesn't want to have this conversation. She's really trying to keep her cool, and then finally she mm. just has had enough. And you finally get to know... What's been <laughs> roiling around inside, inside of her? Yeah. With a surprise baby on the way. 
It is. It's, it's good because finally uh, Skylar is able to say what she wants and needs as opposed to right. asking what's I'm going on. I'm not a 16-year-old moody yeah. son. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, whatever. Lukewarm water heater that leaks rusty-looking crap. and The water heater line here was just, you know, you need to, you have a certain rhythm to these kind of screeds, oh. you know, monologues, and... Uh, you want one or two more things, so we just made up, oh, and, and the water heater leaks. But <laughs> this was such a great speech, and it was so memorable, and it was so easy to remember all the things that um, that Anna, that, that Skylar says in it, that Anna performs here because it's so well-performed that we came back to it, we writers came back to it later in the season and said, what about that rusty water coming out of the water heater? And we put it uh, as a centerpiece of... Uh, Episode 10 of this season where Walt goes a little <laughs> nutty yeah. and, and finds a rod in the house and, uh, <laughs> and, and is replacing the water heater. Rock. I love this little hug. Yeah, yeah. He's like, like, I can't, I don't know he's like, what I'm to here do. for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I'm very uncomfortable. Women crying. This basement set is a great set. Yeah. This is a, a set, yet another set uh, made by our wonderful... Uh, Production designer Rob Wilson King and his crew and yeah. W, uh, our wonderful uh, construction coordinator. Yeah. All this stuff looks so real. Does the actual house have a basement? Uh, not no. like this. Yeah. This also was a, was an interesting thing because we shot it in, in a multitude of, of pieces, and Lynn Willingham, our Emmy winning editor on this and and from the first season, uh, did just a masterful job in putting it together and making it make sense, but also in a concise way so that the story continues on. That's true. Brilliant. In other, words, in other words, you're saying you gave her lots and lots of uh, That's exactly right. right. <laughs> I said, Man, I don't know how to put this together. Please save me. Go. Do what you do. Well, I, I, I'm joking about what well, you gave her here, obviously, but I, that happened to me on the pilot because I directed the pilot and the first drug cooking montage. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just, I just, we just put, you know, put the camera here, put the camera there. Yeah. I had no idea how it was going to go together. And Lynn and Kelly Dixon, who was our editing assistant on the pilot, who later became uh, one of our three wonderful editors, uh, cut this thing together and made me look like a genius. I don't I, know yeah. how I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why we... It always is tied together with the music. There's always fantastic music. Yeah, it? really good music. It, uh, uh, Th uh, Thomas Golubich, our wonderful music yeah. supervisor, finds... Uh, and although most of the time the music is found after... The uh, footage is shot and cut together, or yeah. So this, I think, this piece of music was found much later. But mm -hmm. Thomas uh, Thomas G does a wonderful job finding this stuff. Yeah, he's a, he was also our DJ at our rap party at the end of the season. <laughs> he's a very good DJ, very much in demand. Hey, Hank. Can you actually send a photo this quick over the phone? No. No. Well, nowadays, I imagine you can. I, I, yeah. You were ahead of the times. Back in the old days. Back in the old days. Ago, back, back in the... Uh, kind of. Back in odd eight. Yeah, in odd eight. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really screwed up, man. I apologize in advance. You had to do... This was one hellaciously long day, right, at the junkyard? Because this was all the day that uh, it the, went, the beating and everything. Yeah, it went day into night, yeah. Well, not the beating, actually. The beating no. was from the previous season, but yeah. all the stuff, all the aftermath of the beating, and yeah. then and then this thing here at night. It's always a push. I mean, this, this show uh, tests you as an actor, as a director. It tests every single department because it's never easy. It's not written with that intention. It's complicated and difficult, and, it, you know, that should be behind the scenes. It's always a push. Um, we try to make our days a 12-hour day um, that makes it economically feasible. Mm -hmm. um, we don't always hit that. We strive for that. But um, it's it's always difficult. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how you guys do this show. It's tough. I've gotten to the point I'm, I'm mostly in, in Burbank in our writer's room. Not not out of choice, but just because I, I have to be. Got to keep the, we all got to, writers have to keep the script pipeline flowing. And you guys... Yeah on the set and the crew and these wonderful actors here, this wonderful crew. And these guys work so many hours. Just uh, like you said, you know, you have to do it in eight days. This show, every episode of this show, except for the pilot, which is shot in eight days, which if you know anything about TV, it's just, it's, it's crazy. It should be more like 10 or it's 11. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
should be at least in the X Files. We had 13 days, and then we That's often true. went way well, went way over Probably that usually. That. No. Yeah, I had a first a full a dedicated second unit of oh, yeah. first and second unit. Really? The episode oh. of X Files that I shot was 16 days. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. That's what That's we crazy. shot. The, yeah, that's what we shot the pilot of Breaking Bad in 16 days. Look and it was Aztec supposed to be there. It was almost on two wheels. Yeah, it did. Look at that. Yeah. Shoo. Crash Cranston. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find out later why we call him Crash Cranston. That's right. <laughs> of course, that was a stunt driver who drove up to the camera sure. right there, and we had the. Oh, that wasn't you? Oh, no, 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 oh. no, no, no. Trust me. They don't they trust don't. me driving. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they know better. Trust me, they don't trust him they with a car like trust that. Me driving. Wait, you want to tell them? Because it's not, we're not doing the commentary for that one where yeah. you, where oh, you yeah. nailed the building. Uh, yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> but this one, this one I, you know, I wanted the, the sense of urgency coming right at the camera. And right. so we had our stunt driver uh, drive right up to it. And then I knew that the, if the headlight can just be obliterate the, yeah. the the frame then then we can make a cut and then i can you know jump in and get out yeah. of the car and do that so well done it well, was that al who drove uh no it was ed ed okay ed ed stuntman ed stuntman ed and um, al goto is our wonderful uh stunt uh coordinator yeah. stunt supervisor there was an episode last season where i was driving in in an abandoned motel lot and um when when you're uh, you're trying to get to the hospital for the birth of your daughter. Yes, yeah. and uh, and I I have to exchange the money and this whole thing. So I drive in hot and I hit the brakes and I <laughs> I slid like I was on ice and I thought oh no, bam right into the building. And I'm like, oh crap, <laughs> you know. And and our producers immediately. You know, they're, they're running to see if I'm okay, but really they wanted to see if the car was yeah. okay. But didn't you say, was this is was this too far? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did I go too far? Is that, is that far enough? Is that, yeah, yeah, is that far did. enough? We, everyone ran to look at the front. Oh yeah. my God, he's flattening the tire. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, we only have one Aztec. <laughs> Aztec, what a beautiful car. Uh, yes. Brian was also the bubble wrangler, by the way, in that previous scene. Oh, yes. It, where, where Anna is in the the bathtub, and you know it's it's not dif it's difficult, you know, where, where you have an, an actor in there and you have to get that water hot, and these are all shots that are these are all uh, on our stage. Um, we built these sets; they're not practical sets, so we have the the hot water doesn't flow through the pipe, so we have to put it in through that yeah. to fill it with hot water and keep the bubbles going and cover the necessary parts that need to be covered. The and lady all, bits. And the lady bits. <laughs> the lady bits. And, uh, so in between takes, it's a bunch of grips blown into straws. <laughs> That's right. Like, hey, come <laughs> easy there, boys. <laughs> a little to the left. <laughs> That's right. A little to the left. <laughs> to the left. To the left. Mm, left. <laughs> That looks real. Dry and tidy. That's not a real thing. <laughs> that looks real. Oh, and here's Jesus Jr. getting his arm ripped off. Yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. This is good. You know, what was fun was watching when we did a screening for the crew, I think halfway through the season last year, we did, yeah. we screened this and it was, it's really a great way to watch it because everybody yeah. gets, oh, even though everybody knows right. what's yeah, happening, yeah, yeah. you know, to hear the collective, oh, oh and, and then like, applause, like applause. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, yeah. It's we're going to do that again this yeah. year. We're yeah, going to have yeah. a screening a of fun. so that we. Uh, you can look forward to buying the DVD set for season three. For a lot of reasons. One of them is that Brian directed the first episode of, of our upcoming season as well. So please buy it. Oh, please please <laughs> buy it. Please keep us on the air. We're struggling. Crunch. Ooh. Ooh. Ouch. Oh, I didn't know it's that to hurt. <laughs> and the sound the effects. The sound effect oh is God, really it's awful. good. <laughs> Oh, this is beautiful. Hey, someone called Jay Leno. You got the world's dumbest criminal. This guy wasn't murdered. Look, big stuff here was uh, moving this guy's body when the uh, the stack must have shifted. Crushed his arm, pinned him here, and he, uh, he bled out. Poetic justice. Oh, I love it. Don't you just. Hey, hey, get a photo of me with this guy, right? I'll stomp you here. Make sure you get the stomp in there. <laughs> Walt. We 
Would you talk to me? You think you got enough candles there? I know. Well, bes- between so the hot water and the candles, I was like, <gasps> somebody get me a fan. <laughs> <laughs> This is this is one of those things where where it like you know she's taking a candlelit bath and it's like yeah yeah good, and then it's not until afterward you go God there are a lot of candles. It's and my you, own. You, you know it's like you, you kind of uh, as a director you look at uh, the big picture and sometimes you you miss the 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 smaller elements of it and it's like damn it look at that. <laughs> like, she gonna, needs some like, relaxation, no, yeah, damn it. Candle factory. Yeah, yeah, music playing. Yeah, She's treating herself. It's nice. It's nice. I know, it's a little like, dramatic, but it's nice. <laughs> and on the toilet. I know. So I know. So I know. Oh, 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 the toilet. Yeah, it's it's way over the top. That was a that was a, a uh, bathtub we, shrine. We, we cut out the part where you pan over and there's a woman playing a harp. <laughs> <laughs> I like to. And, <laughs> and a man who's going to feed me grapes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I know what you mean, though. It's so you're running. Ted Benneke is hiding in the corner. Yeah. There's another instance where we didn't have uh, Ray Cruz on this night. He oh, was yeah. working on a different show, so we had to have. This was shot inside a, a, a warehouse, that little piece. Oh. But this piece, he wasn't in the back seat there when we're shooting this part of it. Um, who was it, Helen? It was... Uh, <laughs> Script Dame supervisor Helen. It was Helen. Me. I, came I forget who it was. Dame Helen Caldwell. But it, cause we only had <laughs> one Helen day. Caldwell. This was all the inside bit. Every time you see Ray Cruz in this little bit here... <laughs> yeah, that's... As it, was, it was in the junkyard, in a, in a building in the junkyard, because that was the only day you had him, right? Yes. Was it in yeah. the junkyard? Yeah, it was yeah. in the junkyard. He is a, a sought a, after man. In a yeah. junky yard. That's not him either. But uh, So I just have his hand come in, and this the back of his head is not the real Ray Cruz. Because he was busy, uh, he wanted to be there, but he was busy doing say, um, the closer. Oh, He's closer. doing the closer. Yeah. Yeah. And there we go. And there you have it. Now, is that another crane shot there? That is a crane shot. Yeah. You're just lifting up, slowly lifting well up. Well done, Brian Cranston. Well, well done, Brian. Yeah. 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 Way to go. Uh, good episode. It really it was a good episode. Yeah. I, look, yeah. I haven't seen that. In, it was. Yeah. I don't watch the show personally. But so <laughs> no, I don't watch so when I see these things, it's like, yeah, it's not a bad show. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. My parents say it's their favorite show. Gee, well, they do they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, really? I don't know. Shocking. They might be a little biased, but they say it's their favorite show. My mom prefers Bones. <laughs> um, I mean. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you, Jess. Thank, Thank you. you. Huzzah. <laughs>